Hello, this is Wednesday, January 8th, and as you notice, I am not here today. Now, I'll explain more about that in just a moment. Things that you are going to end up needing for today. Uh, you are going to need a pen or pencil, so we're going to be doing a bit more with notes here in a second. Your English notebook, again, doing more with notes here in just a moment. And possibly your iPad, but if you have it, it should be definitely closed and off to the side. Because if we do use it, it's probably not going to be until the very end of class. We have a little bit. So if you have it out, I'm going to have Mr. Subperson uh, be mean to you and either write down your name or take it or something like that. So don't have it out. Don't be that person and maybe be mean to you from a distance. Speeches still begin on Monday, and I will be going through and explaining to you how they work in just a second. Uh, so you'll still get all that information to try and make things a little bit better for you. So don't worry, I'm not going to leave you hanging. Uh, we do have the Fable Quiz coming up. Ooh, it's not on Monday. That was silly of me. Let's cross that out. It's actually on Friday. So it's going to be in two days. Uh, and so we'll finish out. We'll do more of the notes here today. And then we're going to finish out the notes tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll have a quiz coming up on Friday. We're going to talk about uh, the quiz and the notes and the homework and stuff like that. And I'll cover that here in a moment too. So the quiz is actually going to be on Friday because I planned ahead. Um, and so part of it is I can explain down here this bottom part. Yeah, I've known I was going to be absent. I didn't tell you guys ahead of time because no offense, but you tend to kind of freak out when I'm going to be gone. So I was trying to to minimize that one. Uh, I'm fine. I'm healthy, but Mrs. Me is having surgery. Um, and don't freak out again. She has cancer. Uh, so yeah, I know yesterday when I was doing notes, I made a cancer joke, uh, but it's okay because my wife has cancer. And so we're getting through it. Not fatal. She'll be okay. Uh, she's having surgery to have it removed, so we'll all be okay. Didn't mean to freak you out. I'm just not a big person for talking about my own life, but I figured you guys had a right to know why I was gone. So that's all it is. Anyway, back to the fun stuff about learning. Let's leave all the sadness behind us and get to more of the good things. Yep. Uh, you should have the Fable Notes in there in case you're one of our kids who has been dead. Uh, make sure you get this put into your table of contents, and then we're going to be doing more of it here in a moment. You're going to be able to copy stuff down, but you're probably going to have to do speedy version or get my notebook or go online to the website or something like that uh, because we are going to do more notes today, but we've already covered most of the notes so far. All right. Here's the homework coming up. Uh, here's where technically your uh, iPad will come in handy at the end. You don't need it yet because I'm going to show you a picture of it. This is what connects to the quiz coming up on Friday. The Fables homework will be due Tuesday because we'll take quiz on Friday. I'll get them back to you Monday or before we give speeches. Um, and then homework will come due on Tuesday and we'll talk about that. And so if you want to get a copy of the homework, which I'll hopefully send out probably on our minds coming up this week. Anyway, um, it's going to be, there is a new uh, page on my website called Fable Info. All the old ones are pretty much gone. The one that had like our novel that we're reading, one that had the book report is gone, the one that said semester exam, all of those pages are gone. So now there's just like one that says Camp Tecumseh and grammar and then one that says fables and speeches. So you're going to go to the one that has fables and speeches and on there there's a button that says fable homework. You'll click on that and this is what it looks like. Allow me to show you. All right, so it's going to come up with this new page, uh, which will have two pages to it. Uh, the first page looks like this. So first page, this is the one that you're really going to worry about for the most part. Uh, it's going to have, it's set up differently than our other ones. And so the way it's set up is this first column, when you get to it, this is where the Fable homework is going to be. It's going to have 12 questions over there. You're only going to have to answer 10 of them. Again, that thing I keep telling you to do, make sure you do a complete sentences. So whichever 10 of the 12 you do, you're going to do a complete sentences. If you would prefer to do the letter thing, if you're one of those people, uh, I do have that option down here at the bottom, and you are more than welcome to do that. But again, make sure you read the directions because all of the things you write about are going to come from the fables that are on this page or from the notes that we did in class. So you're going to have to make sure you reference those. And then again, make sure you have the correct number of letters. Make sure you use those letters that are right there. Uh, so hopefully that helps guide you in the right direction. The other thing that you are going to notice on here is going to be the fact that um, I have uh, fables set up on this page. So there's a fable here, a fable here. When you go to the next page, I'm reading some of these fables in class tomorrow. So you will get a chance to see these fables and hopefully that helps you out a wee bit. 
second page is going to end up looking like this one. But back to that first page for now. You're going to have another fable, fable, fable. And so I've got like five different fables on there to give you different examples of how our fables are going to be set up. That way you can have references to them. Uh, we will be going over it. Hmm. So I've never gone back and forth on the pages before. So I'm wondering if that just was, became all garbled. If it did, I apologize if all of a sudden it suddenly jumped to this page because I'm looking down at the little timer and I've never tried jumping back and forth on pages. There's every chance that was real confusing. If so, I apologize. Things we learn. Anyway, moving on. So if you got to this page now in the actual video, um, I have fables on this page too that we're going to get a chance to read. And so we'll read these uh, tomorrow in class because we're going to finish out the rest of our notes and then get to these and then we should be good to go from there. But for the most part, there's just example fables. It's got a uh, verse fable, modern fable, uh, what else do you call the uh, traditional fables. So it's got all three different types of fables on there to help you out. All right. Now, hopefully I don't scrub over this more moving forward. All right. So here's how speeches are going to work, at least the first speech that we're going to end up starting next week. I believe we're going to be doing speeches uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then we'll be doing fables on Tuesday, Thursday. So that way it sort of makes things up a little bit. So speech, your speech that you're going to be giving, you are going to be telling us a story. It is what is called a narrative speech. This story can either be true or fiction. It can be a story about you, a story that you've heard about a person. It could be a made-up story. You could tell a story about a little boy wizard with a scar on his head and an angry man with no nose. Or it can be the story about that one day you saw a monkey at the zoo and you tried to pet it. Or it could be just a made-up story about yourself, about that one time you were kidnapped by aliens. It's up to you. It just has to be a story about whatever you want this story to be. I'm just looking for it to have a beginning, a middle, hopefully an end. So when you do it, here's where it's going to get a little bit on the tricky one. I'm giving you a secret word before you give your speech. So a few minutes before you go, you're going to come up to me and I'm going to write a word down on a piece of paper. This becomes the secret word that only you and I know. You have to use this word at some point in your speech. So if I give you the word giraffe, you're going to have to use the word giraffe at some point in your speech. I'm only going to give you like nouns, verbs, adjectives. I'm not going to give you the word a or an or the. It'll be you know happy or giraffe or ugly or fast or jump or something like that. When I give you this word, you have to figure out how to work this word into your story without the audience knowing what word I gave you. Their goal is to figure out the word. Your goal is to have them have no clue what your word was because your speech is so fluid and strong. If you don't like the word I give you, say I give you the word pirate, and you have no idea how to use that word in your speech, you are more than welcome to choose a new word or have me choose a new word for you. It does cost you the two B points, though, so keep that part in mind. And so you can technically do that as many times as you want, probably up to seven, because that would cost you 14 points, and that'd be a bold move. But if that's the thing you want to do to keep choosing new words, you certainly could. When you get the word, make sure you do not say the word out loud because the people sitting next to my desk will hear you if you walk up and look at the word and go, dinosaur, dinosaur. They're going to hear you and know what your word is, so make sure you keep it a secret. You are more than welcome to add endings to it or add to it in some way. Let's say I give you the word live and you want to make it the word living. Absolutely fine. I have no problem with that. Or you want to turn it into the word living room. No problem with that either. You can add an ED or an S or make it part of a compound noun. Any of that is absolutely fine with me. I just need you to use this word at some point during your speech. 
The only thing I'm going to harass you about during your speech is you cannot put your hands in your pockets while giving your speech, and you cannot have a bad stance. The pockets will be distracting, whether it's your hoodie pockets or whether it's your pants pockets or shorts pockets. I'm going to yell, pockets, and make you take your hands out of your pockets. Or if you're rocking back and forth. Now, I don't mean like rocking back and forth with like your bad self and like you have like your head down like this and your hand up in the air and you're like, rock on. Not that kind of rocking. I mean more like you're wiggling back and forth and being all kinds of distracting. That's the kind of rocking I don't want you to do. Or if you have like a bad stance where like you, some kids uh, end up trying to like wiggle back and forth and it's distracting, that's what we're going to have an issue with. All right. Things you can't do as far as cheating. Uh, I have some kids who attempt to do cheaty bits, uh, and what they attempt to do are things like, um, uh, hang on one second, let's go to here. Uh, you cannot try and list your word, uh, and if you say, like, in, like if, you're, if you give you the word dinosaur, you can't say, I was walking down the street, and yesterday I saw a fish, a monkey, a pickle, a dinosaur, a pirate. A de in that case, I'm going to stop you and say, cheating, list, and you're going to have to repeat your word. So do not put it into a list of things. You have to use it all by itself. You also cannot try and whisper your word. That's also going to qualify as cheating because I have kids who will get up there and give their speech and they'll get like, one day I was walking down the street and I was scared because I saw a dinosaur and I had no idea it was... That's not going to work. I'm going to say whisper and I'm going to make you repeat it. So you have to say your word loud enough for us to be able to hear it. If not, you're going to be out of luck on that one too. Your speech length. 45 seconds. You are up there for 45 seconds no matter what. At 45 seconds, I stop you. If you've not said your word by the 45 second mark, you lose points. So you have to say it at some point between zero and 45 seconds while you are giving this speech. Then um, at 45 seconds, I will stop you. If you choose not to speak at all, that's fine. You can just stand up there and cry. You are more than welcome to do that also. If you choose to just stand up there and cry, you can do that for 45 seconds, and that's fine with me too. But you're going to be standing up there for the full time. You are going to be on a chair, which I'll explain to you here in just a moment, uh, and I'll show you a picture of how it's set up. Um, and then after the 45 seconds, you have to stay up there for 15 more seconds because kids then get a chance to guess what your word is. And when kids guess your word, they're going to have a piece of paper and they have to write the word down. They're not going to be yelling it out loud or anything like that. They're going to have to write it on a piece of paper and show a kid next to them. And so that's where you're going to have a pen in class and we'll get to all of that. But So you're going to write the word down and that's how the kids are going to get a chance to figure out what they think your word was. The kids in the audience are going to try and guess your word. If they can figure out what your word was, then they can get B points for guessing your word. If enough kids guess your word, you lose B points. If your speech is just awful, and again, I give you the word dinosaur, and your whole speech is, one day I saw a dinosaur, and that was your whole speech, and the whole class guesses dinosaurs, you're going to lose points. But if you can work it into the speech and no kid guesses it, then you have a chance of gaining B points. If you never say the word, it's like everyone guesses it, and you lose the maximum points. If you don't say any words and you just stand there the whole time, then again, you'll lose the maximum points. And that'll be on the next screen. I will show you that in a second, so you'll figure out how many points you can lose. As far as the audience goes... Uh, for them, they are not allowed to talk during the speeches. It'll be a bit of a distraction. So while a kid is standing on the chair, you cannot talk. That'll cost you points. And then the other big one that kids have an issue with is when you do guess the word correct and you're all excited, you cannot celebrate by jumping out of your seat. It drives me bonkers. If you do that, I'm going to end up charging you points. So you'll end up losing points as much as you end up gaining points. So you have to stay seated no matter how excited you may be. No jumping up and screaming or anything like that. All right, so let me show you how it's going to be set up now that you have some idea of how your whole speech thing goes. So this is how my room will be set up. My podium will be scooted back and I'm going to have a chair sitting here in front of it. This is the standing chair. When you give your speech, you'll be standing on the chair and that's how you'll give the speech and then all the kids who are sitting in the seats around us will get a chance to like watch you and they're going to be looking at you while you give your speech standing on the chair. Yes, you give your speech on a chair. All of our speeches are done on a chair. There's a reason for that and it's because later on when you start giving speeches, it makes life much easier because you're 
you're going to be freaking out about being on a chair. And when you're freaking out about being on a chair, it actually distracts you from giving a speech. As weird as it is, there is psychology that goes into it that actually makes the giving of the speech easier because you're busy freaking out about a chair. Don't ask me why. It's weird. It's a mental thing. But the long term, it does make speeches easier. That's one of the things I figured out from just years of doing it. So here's what it's going to look like. You're going to be standing on a chair giving a speech. Uh, the only difference is you're not actually going to have one of these little pieces of paper up there because you're not going to write your speech out ahead of time. Your speech is going to be all in your brain right there. Uh, and so you're not going to have any paper with you. It's just going to be all in your mind and your brain as you stand up there and give a speech. If you want to know how much time is left as you give a speech, there will be a timer going behind you, but you won't be able to see it because it's behind you. But you are more than welcome to turn around and look at the timer if you want. You just can't talk while you're turning around and looking at the timer. So if you need to pause and turn around and look at timer, you can. It just cuts into your 45 seconds. And so some of you are probably going to freak out and turn around and look at the clock a lot. That's fine. Eventually, it just means it's going to end up costing you B points. So be it. And so the others of you will be stronger, and you'll just give your whole speech. And then as soon as the 45 seconds hits, and we'll see it, because it'll tell us the 45 seconds behind you, I'll say, stop, and you'll stop giving your speech. And then the kids in the audience will then have to sort of guess whatever your particular word may have been. If they get it right, then they'll get B points. If they all get it wrong, you gain B points. And I'll show you how that works here in a moment, too and then we'll rotate to the next person. Again, if you volunteer to be up there and no one volunteers after you, you do get to pick the next person. So you'll then get to choose our next person to give a speech after you. Uh, but if people volunteer, then they get to rob you of that. But that's the joy of volunteering. You then get to pick the next person to then have to give a speech. All right, now back to the other screen. All right, so again, just so that you can sort of see how the whole thing is set up. So it has to be a true, has to be a story, either true or made up. It is completely up to you. I'm going to give you a secret word. You could add endings to it. Uh, the main thing I'll yell at you for is putting hands in pockets, rocking back and forth, having a bad stance. Uh, you cannot list or whisper. Basically, if it feels like you're cheating, you're probably cheating, and I'll stop you. Uh, your speech length is exactly 45 seconds. Whether you give a good speech or whether you sit up there and cry, you're going to be talking for 45 seconds the entire time. And then you have to remain on your chair for the full time. That's the whole speech time while you're up there. And that pretty much covers the whole speech thing. It's... Honestly, not bad. It's why I begin with this speech, to try and make things as painless as possible. I know many of you guys hate giving speeches, and the idea of this freaks you out. So I'm trying to ease you into it as well as I can by giving you a short speech. It's a speech about a thing that you should be able to do because it's any story that you want. If you mess it up, all it's going to do is cost you B points. The biggest thing this first one is going to be about is just getting you used to standing in front of the room and talking, and that's it. And if you're getting embarrassed, so be it, because all the other kids are going to be freaking out and getting embarrassed. And I know that's like the biggest fear is you guys freaking out in front of people. So when we get to it, eventually, I'll start telling you the story about me giving a speech. And no matter how bad you think your speech will be, my speech when I was in the high school uh, a freshman was even worse than yours. But well, it's a story that we'll get to in the future. All right. So how does the whole point thing work? All right. So here is how it works. When you give your speech, if nobody guesses it and you are the speaker and nobody guesses your word, you are going to gain three B points. For now, that is the maximum that you can gain. It does eventually change. You can eventually get more B points. Uh, not this first round, but we will eventually give you another chance to do this. And you can start getting more points by adding little challenges into it, which we'll talk about as we get farther. But for now, you give a speech, you do the word dinosaur, no kid guesses your word, you're going to get three B points. The problem is, if anybody guesses your word, the speaker gets no points. If only one kid guesses it, you still get nothing. The only way a speaker gains points is if no one guesses your word. You've got to rock it and be super good. Now, in the audience, this is the easiest way to gain points. In the audience, if one kid guesses it correctly, then that one kid is going to end up getting three points instead. So instead of the speaker getting a point, the guesser gets the three points. Now, if two to three people guess it, they each get 
two points. So on um, this one over here, so if we have two to three kids get it, they're going to each get two points. If four to six kids get it, they each get one point apiece. All the way up to now, if seven, eight, or nine correctly guess it, nobody gains points. So the speaker doesn't gain points, the audience doesn't gain points, no one loses points. After nine, then if more people guess it, that means you gave a pretty bad speech. Now you're going to start losing points. If 10 to 13 people guess your word, you're going to lose a point. If 14 to 16 people can guess your word, you're going to lose two points. And if 17 or more people guess your word, then the speaker up there on the chair, you're going to lose three B points. If you don't say your word, you lose three B points. If you don't say anything and just stand there and gently weep, you're going to lose three B points. If you mean to say your word but forget to say it, you're going to lose three B points. But that is the maximum you can lose. The most you can lose for your speech is three if you give a horrible speech and everyone can figure it out or you forget to say the word. Quite honestly, the most common thing that's going to happen is kids forgetting to say the word, much more than kids giving a bad speech. I have kids who just get excited and start talking and then completely space the idea of using their word. So that'll be the most common thing. That's it. That's how our first speech works coming up on Monday. You're going to get a chance to gain three B points if you do really well or get a chance to lose three B points if you have a really tough time. Kids in the audience who are watching, you're going to get a chance to guess. You're going to be writing your guess on a piece of paper, and if you get it correct, you get a chance to gain points. And yes, I'm prepared for cheaters as a whole system. I'm seeing I've been doing this since dinosaur times. I'll show you the system on Monday when we get to it, and you'll figure it out from there. Yay, yay speeches have now been introduced. Monday, we'll give our first one. I'm sure you guys will have a couple questions tomorrow, but hopefully this covers most of it. Now, back to fables. All right, so real quick, just to cover things, do a speedy little uh, little thing here to help you out. Uh, the fable notes we went through there, uh, if you have been gone and haven't been caught up on all of these, uh, then you can either write quickly, but the screen's not going to be up there super long, uh, or you can borrow my notebook, which is behind my desk, which you're going to have to give, uh, I put a shoe over there, or you can go to my website, and this is on my website also, and you're more than welcome to go there. You just have to go to the notebook page. So again, we have three types of fables, traditional, old-timey stuff, verse, written as a poem. It's where I draft my, dropped, draft? Words are hard. Dropped my mad rhymes. Uh, and then modern, which is uses that scientific word today -y stuff. So those are our three types of fables that we're going to be getting into. The main thing we have to have is a moral. Once again, that's going to be your lesson learned, advice, observation on human nature. The care... If I was there with you guys right now, I'd be going through and making you guys like guess and say these out loud and stuff like that, but it doesn't really work in this version, unfortunately. I feel the same way. It's just kind of a bummer. So we have to do this boring version, but maybe tomorrow when I get back, I can do the torture you version. We'll try to help you guys out from that one, but fingers crossed. Anyway, so the characteristics, the five main things, ooh, I guess technically if you wanted to, you could close your eyes right now or cover your eyes and you could try to listen along and see how well you can remember this stuff because this is pretty much what's going to be on the homework and then again what's going to be on the quiz coming up. Uh, so that might make things a little bit better for you. All right, anyway, characteristics of fables. Uh, one, must have a moral, uh, the thing that you learn. Two, to keep kids paying attention. Animals are going to be our main characters. Three, so the kids pay attention all the way to the end. They're going to have to be brief or short, unlike me and my babbling. Uh, four, uh, the humorous and funny. Uh, this is where I made the joke yesterday about cancer. Uh, at the time, you guys were like, ha, 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 cancer, it's hilarious. And now you realize, hey, there's other reasons behind it too. But if you can't laugh at it, then what's the point? It's much better laughing at things. Anyway, okay. Enjoyed by people of all ages. So again, even old people have to be able to enjoy our fables. So hopefully you picked up on our five things from there. Then we talked about the fact that now that we have fables, we're going to get to the part where um, we have the guy who made fables famous. And who was the guy that made fables famous? See, it's sort of like I get to play along with the version of you guys right now. Hopefully you guys all said, Aesop. Good job. Proud of you guys. All right, uh, so again, um, if you want to cover your ears uh, to try and help you out, Aesop lived approximately 
And if you don't have the dates, that's fine. I would take either A, a long time ago, or B, when Mr. Broviak was a child. I would take either one of those as answers. Ooh, uh, my, let's go with this one. Uh, if I can, uh, 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 and um, see, we'll try to put it on. So now we can go with where was it that he originally lived before he was taken as a slave when he grew up as a child? And now you can look up the screen and hopefully you'll go, Africa! And we can erase it and go, oh my God, you're so smart. And I go, well, then after he was kidnapped and taken from Africa, in what country did he go to li live, live and grow up as a slave? Hopefully you all yelled, Greece! Nicely done. Ah, uh, let's see. My next question will go to, uh, uh, we'll go with that one right there. Uh, we'll cross out that one right there too. And then that's it. All right. Once he started telling his stories and did the whole uh, telling kids about the monkeys and the rhinoceros, uh, he got so good at his storytelling that who is he eventually able to tell stories to? You know, hopefully you said emperor. I, I know it was written through on the screen a moment ago. I'm aware, but I'm trying to play a game as best I can. But he became so good at telling his stories to the emperor, he was eventually able to get the one thing that all slaves want, and that would be... Yay. Did you guys say a car? <laughs> so proud of you. Again, he got his freedom. And then with that one, once he was free, it turns out, ooh, we have a question we can throw in there. Uh, with this part, turns out that all of these stories that he was going through and doing, he did not create. He stole them from other people. And because he stole them from other people, uh, there is a name for that. And so what is it basically he became famous for? Well done. Plagiarism. Uh, let's see, how do you spell plagiarism? Uh, ooh, let's go play uh, jur uh, ism Nailed it. Uh, and so he became famous for plagiarism. Really feel like I spelled that correctly. Um, and that's what he became famous for. And then the other story that I started with you, which is talking about Aesop and the whole thing with... Um, the, the uh, farmers and the warriors and stuff like that. It really is more of a visual thing, so I have to have you guys see me do it. Uh, so here's where we're gonna switch out and I have a second video. It's gonna be one from me from two years ago. Uh, and so you get to see my facial hair change a little bit. But two years ago, I have a version of me telling that particular story. And so I'm gonna switch out and have the sub switch to the other screen or the other video. Uh, so you guys get a chance to watch me telling that story uh, because it works a little better. I, I I know some of you guys got partway through that story, so we'll have to back up a little bit. Some of my classes didn't even get to that story. Other classes got all the way through to the part where he's walking down to the lake. So you'll just have to run with it for a minute. Use your imagination with my whole being able to tell a story. Again, I know it would be better if I was there in person, but this one's not exactly my choice. I just kind of love Mrs. Me, and I'm there to support her. Uh, so you have to just roll with it on this one. But the other video, you know, it's still me. It's just not, you know, me, me. But you get to see me as opposed to here where you just get to hear me. Anyway, weird. All right, so now this is where the sub is going to go back to my website uh, and then go to the second video where it says play video number two, and this is going to be the one from video number two. Uh, sub uh, on, on this one, uh, when you go back, I think for each class period, you'll have to go back and restart it because I have it keyed to start at a certain point, so that way you don't have to watch the whole video. It just starts playing right at this moment. So I think unless you memorize which spot it's in, which I don't have that memorized off the top of my head, um, you'll just have to go back and like replay it from that same spot so that you know exactly where that video is. I think I'm trying to leave you guys time at the end after that video. If things go well uh, and you guys have not wasted time and been too distracting and stuff like that, uh, then I'm going to try and give you guys time to hopefully either um, work on... Ooh, I don't like that color. Hang on, let's make that disappear. Uh, you can either work on the homework, uh, begin the homework for a handful of you who are really good, finish the homework, uh, because on this one, there is no testing out of it. Uh, you cannot tape in your quiz. You're going to have to either... Uh, be able to do option one or option two. So one way or the other, you're going to have to do one of the options. So I figure make things easier on you. Try to get it done. If you've paid attention to the notes so far, you'll be able to get most of it done. There's a little bit we still have to cover tomorrow. So a couple of the questions you may not know. There's going to be some questions about motifs. Uh, those you won't know yet. 
some of the questions about the actual fables, they're on the handout. So you can just read those and you'll be fine as far as that goes. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but again, we have quiz coming up on Friday, homework due Tuesday, uh, speeches begin Monday, and tomorrow we're going to finish out the whole rest of the things. All right. I think that's all I have for you today. I think I've left, I think the video for the next one of me telling the story is about 10 minutes or so, uh, which hopefully should leave you guys, depending on how much time you waste at the beginning, uh, should leave you guys some time to hopefully get a chance to begin working on the, the homework uh, to try and get that done. Other than that, um, I will be back tomorrow. So I'll see you guys then. I'm just gone for today and that's it. Um, Hopefully things have gone well. Uh, I'll check you guys. Uh, thank you for the ones of you who have already sent me messages on Remind uh, because as I was recording this, my <laughs> Remind buzzer keeps going off and you know, kids are sending me messages. So I appreciate it. You guys are sweet. You make me smile. Um, That's why I keep doing what I do. All right. Check you. Keep smiling. Bye.